This is question six from paper 3-1 from the June 2020 Cambridge exams. Up the top right of the screen, the card will bring you to the playlist that has all my other solutions to the questions from this paper. And in the description below the video, you'll find a link to an image of this question so you can try it before looking at my solution. This is a multi-part question. The first part of the question gives us this circle with a couple of tangent lines from it and asks us to find from the information they give us this equation. So that's the first thing we'll do. Then with this equation, they want us to go ahead and try and solve x using the iterative model, uh, the iterative approach. I can't pronounce it, but I'll show you how to do it at least. Right, so the first thing to do is to find where this comes from. Now it gives a few t bits of information here. They tell us this shaded region here is equal to the circle. So basically, at some point, we're going to get an equation, because I can write the circle down right now. This is the area of both now. The circle is pi r squared. So we're basically just going to get pi r squared is equal to something. That's something being the shaded area of that's shown here. So really, now we can um, bring the question down to what is this sh shaded region. So let's go ahead and try and do that. And I'll write this back in at the end. Okay, to find the shaded region... Uh, the easiest way I would see is to split it into these two triangles. Because uh, if we put a line down the middle here, we'll get a triangle that looks like uh, this. And if we can find the area of this triangle, we just need two of them. And that will give us the area of this entire shape here. Let me draw some of this out. This shape here. And from this shape, we can take away uh, this shape. And that will leave us... The, the shaded region shape. That's, that's my goal here. So first I'll get this triangle. We have a right angle, that's good. We know the length of this is R. And we actually know the angle up here. This angle is two pi, two X, I mean, this large angle. So half of it is just X. So we actually know the angle. So that's three pieces of information. So we can solve this triangle. It's, um, we have a length, we have an angle, and we have an angle, so we have enough pieces of information. Uh, there's a few ways to do it, but there's only one that's gonna bring the tangent out. It's the most sensible one anyway. If we have a triangle with a right angle, we really just want the height times the base. So here's the height. What's the base here? Let's, uh, let's put a letter in for a B. And then um, we just need to find out what that is. We have an angle, a right angle triangle. So let's see, we need something with the B in it, the R in it. That'll be tangent. The tangent of x, that's where that appears from. The tangent of x is equal to the opposite, which is b, over the adjacent, which is r. Or to put that another way, we get r tangent of x is equal to b. Now you don't need the right b. b never has to um, exist, really. Let's rub this b out. We'll, we'll leave these. b was just some letter you made up, or I made up in this case. Um, or tangent x. When you get more used to this um, in maths, using this over time, you'll actually just remember this in your head. Oh, well, this must be or tangent x. Maybe give it a double check. Other times you'll be, for other areas, you'll be like, well, this is um, or sine something. It won't be x in this case. Sorry, it won't be or something in this case. But anyway, you'll, you'll know a lot of these letters. But there's a simple way to find it. Okay, so with that, let's get the area of this shape, because that's what we need, the area of this shape. The area of this one is a half times the base um, times the perpendicular height. So we'll get two R's appearing out of that. So that's the area of this guy, let's say, uh, area here. The area of two of them is just two times this. So the area of that is just R squared tangent X. That's just two of these halves. So basically the half disappears. The area of this one, let's uh, do that down here somewhere. There's a formula for this, and the area of a segment, but I, I like to just do it easily. The area of an entire circle is pi r squared. So I just want part of the circle. So um, a whole circle is two pi. So part of the, how much of the circle am I using here? I'm using two x's of it. Uh, let's see, this two pi cancels with this pi and this two. So we're just left with x or squared and minus x or squared. And this is a very common way. It's basically just the half the angle um, times or squared. Yes, half this angle times or squared is just the area of a segment there. 
right, that's what we find. And so the, the number we want is equal to, let's see, r squared in both of them, r squared times tangent x minus x. That's, uh, that's the area of this, sh this shape here, of this shaded shape here. Let me um, finish it off here. And remember what they told us. They told us the shaded region, r squared tangent, uh, sorry, r squared, what happened there? I, I missed the bracket. r squared tangent x minus x is equal to the area of this circle. Area of the circle is pi r squared. We're about to find this. We have r squared on both sides. Let's cancel that. And we just have tangent x. Let's add x to both sides is equal to pi plus x. And that's what they wanted us to find. So hopefully you followed along with that. It was all about finding the area of, of this shape here. To find that, we find the area of this and took away this. And there's probably a couple of other ways to get this area. And um, they should look similar, although you might end up finding sines and cosines and things like that. But I promise they should equal to tangent if you have a look at your different trigonometry and see if you can equate them to equal tan x. I, I'm guessing tan x should fall out quite easily if you did it in a slightly different way. Okay, let's uh, move on to part B. I will, do I need anything here? No, I'll rub all this out. We'll just need uh, this equation here and we'll do part B. So for part B, they tell us that this equation, we don't need this anymore, by the way, the, this equation uh, has one root between zero and, yeah, between zero and pi over two. It has one root in there. And they tell us that that root, or they ask us to verify that that root x is between one and 1 1.4. So this is about 1.6 or so, 1.7. This is zero. They're telling us just a little more exactly that we can verify it's between one. Remember pi is 3.14, so divided by two is 1.5, so 1.6 maybe. Um, but they're telling us, asking us to find that it's between one and 1 1.4. And here's how we do it. It's actually quite simple. We just try it out. We try out tangent one is equal to pi plus one. See what, what that tells us. If we put this in here, I have uh, have it done on a calculator already. Later on, they ask us to use four uh, decimal places, so I might as well use four here. But you don't need to. Uh, two decimal places, uh, three significant figures is fine. 1.5574 is equal to four point, this one, a lot of people might do in their head because they know what pi is, 3.14159. So yeah, that's correct. <laughs> And so that rounds off to one six. So that's what we get if we put one in. So obviously it's not right. 1.5, is not equal, 1.5574 is not equal to 4.1416. It's a good bit off. Right, let's try the other one. Let's try tangent of 1.4. These are the two numbers they gave us in the question. One and 1.4. Tangent 1.4 is equal to pi plus 1.4. If we put that in, let me go back to my notes again, we will get 5.7979 is equal to 4.5416. Again, this is clearly not right either, but we now know the answers between 1 and 1.4. Have a look why. This number is less than this one. This number is bigger than this one. They must have crossed somewhere. The, the correct answer must be somewhere here in the middle. Uh, to write that, uh, this, the, this is how I've come up with uh, writing this in the exam. This is enough, by the way, but maybe at the end you could write something like at x equals to one tangent of x is, let's see, tangent of the x is less than pi plus x and at x uh, equals 1.4, tangent of x is greater than pi plus x. That's really what I'm trying to say here. It's less than and it's greater than. It must meet in the middle. So let's. I'm, here's what I'd write as the answer. Therefore, x is, is uh, greater than one and less than 1.4. That's what I would take from that piece of information. And that's what they wanted, to verify by calculation that the, the, uh, 
the answer is between 1 and 1.4. So that's your full mark for part B. For part C, I'll, I'll go ahead and rub this out. I could probably squeeze it in, but I'll rub this out and we'll do part C. We'll get this number again, I think, but we'll do it in, in part C. So part C would ask us to use the iterative formula, and that's um, when we have x on its own. In this case, we don't yet, but they've, they've set it up for us. Basically, you just get tangent, uh, the inverse tan of both sides, and I'll do that here. The inverse tan of the left is x, the inverse tan of the right is this. When we have something where x is on its own, and there's an x in here, what we can do is basically just write n plus 1 here and an n here. That's made. If we make a guess at x, put it in here, the next guess will be here. And if we stay doing that over and over, we'll get the right answer. So what that means is, um, I'll do it manually first, and I'll show you how to do it a bit easier on the calculator. Make, make your first guess. We've already done one, so let's go. Let's guess x1 is equal to 1. That's our, our very first guess, so x1 here. So then x2 will equal to... The inverse tangent of pi plus um, x1, uh, plus 1. So see what I've done here? n plus, n is 1, x1, n plus 1, that must be 2. So x2 is this. This will give us the answer for x2. If I go ahead and do this out, uh, I would get, let's see, 1.33333. 1 and then I just make my next guess x2 is equal to 1.3339, therefore x3 is equal to the inverse tangent of pi plus 1.3339, and that will give me x4 being equal to, uh, sorry, am I on the right number here, x2, uh, sorry, x3 here, this should be, x3 is equal to 1.351. Uh, zero if you want to write it. Okay, so you stay going like this until the first two numbers repeat, or all four numbers repeat if you want. You stay going until you've got exactly into your answer. I'll show you how to do that much easier with a calculator. What I will type into my calculator is, I'll type 1, just type letter 1 and equals. And what that does inside my calculator is, that makes the answer button equal to, uh, correspond to 1. That's what it does inside my calculator. So on then my next line of my calculator, I'll simply write uh, this sum here. I'm gonna write the inverse tangent. So that's on my calculator. Inverse tangent of I, I won't I won't put the squares every time. So the inverse tangent of pi plus answer. I'll put the little square on that one here. That's what I'm gonna put in. I'll I'll do this now. So one equals one or just one equals, and that, that'll set my answer button equal to one. And then I'm gonna get the inverse, apologies, uh, I'm gonna get the inverse tangent of, let's see, pi plus the answer. And I'm gonna write equals. So that will give me, let's see, the first number we'll have is one. The next number it'll give me is one point, I'll read it from here, 1.33387, so that's nine. Now look what happens when I press equals again. The calculator still has this as its sum. The calculator still thinks this is the sum, so it's gonna try and do this again. Except now the answer is no longer one. The answer uh, now becomes, the answer saved in your calculator, the answer button on your calculator now points to the number 1.3339. So if I just press equals again, it'll do all these very quickly for me. 35096. Six, uh, so that just becomes one. Press equals again, I get 1.35177, so that comes to one eight. Press it again, I get 1.3518. I've already repeated, I don't need to stay going. But if I, I can stay going as many times as I want, I can just press it multiple and multiple times. I'll get better and better answers, but uh, I still won't get any better than the one I have here for four decimal places. So this is uh, the correct answer for four decimal places. They only wanted two, and we were actually on track already on this one. So the correct answer is x is equal 1.35. If I go longer and longer, I can get more decimal places of accuracy. 
And that's the power of the iterative formula. And that's also the power of computers, in this case of Calclair, to do questions like this, to, to iterate on questions. Because they can do them quite quickly, once you know the story or an answer in the Calclair. You could stay doing it this way, by the way. You would have got the correct answer. You would have got the correct answer already, but you would have needed to stay going to uh, this one here to confirm it. So you would like to, they ask you to do four decimal places. So you, I'd like to do until the four decimal places repeat. That's when I would give the correct answer. I guess you could have stopped maybe at this one here when two decimal places repeated, because that's all they needed as an answer. Either way, the calculator will do it much faster than doing this every time. Right, I hopefully that answers everything in this part. It was a good question, I thought. The iterative formula wasn't too messy, and there was a nice um, area and volume question at the start. If you do have any questions, put them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.